everybody welcome to the headwater side center live stream so today we've got one little special guest uh, you might be able to see rusty on me here he's one of our two red tail boas um before i get started today headwater science center we're open 9 30 to 5 monday through saturday sunday we're open 1 to 5 so feel free to stop by any day of the week uh also I'd like to remind you all Coming up on Earth Day, April 22nd, we have an event called Prehistoric Painting Night. Uh, a Bemidji State University capstone student is going to be running a workshop where you can come in and paint a model of a prehistoric animal, and you get to take it home. There's going to be a little bit of an informative thing, too. You're going to get to learn about this animal, and at the end of the live stream, I'll tell you which one that's going to be. Uh, but we're going to get started today. Uh, today, we are going to talk about mosasaurs. So this is part two of my marine reptiles live streams. And... You're going to notice a few familiar terms. If you remember some of the first live streams I did here, I was covering reptiles. And one of my first ones, I think actually my second or third live stream was on snakes. And I had our ball python out. Uh, today I grabbed Rusty, our red-tailed boa, because we are going to talk about mosasaurs today. And mosasaurs are a unique type of marine reptile from the, the mid to late Cretaceous. So from about 92 million years ago to just about 65 million years ago. So they are in the Kingdom Animalia, the Phylum Chordata. Pretty much most of the animals I, I cover are in that general group. They're in the class Reptilia. And this is where it's going to get familiar, hopefully. Oops, sorry, Rusty. Uh, they are in the Order Squamata, which is the same group of reptiles as modern lizards and snakes. They are in the Clade Pyhonomorpha, I believe. And the superfamily is Mosasauria. So, Mosasaur's modern-day relatives include animals like the Komodo dragon and snakes. Komodo, so, Komodo dragons are part of a group of lizards called Varanid lizards, and Varanid lizards are the closest living relatives to snakes. Uh, snakes and lizards, as we've gone over in the past, are actually quite closely related as far as reptiles go. And Mosasaurs are also in that little group of reptiles. So mosasaurs, uh, they range in size. The smallest animals could be just about three feet long, maybe 60 pounds at most. Uh, and the largest ones could be about 56 feet, so almost 60 feet long, and would weigh about 30,000 pounds. Now that is a very large animal, but I do want to remember uh, blue whales are 300,000 pounds, so they are 10 times the size of the largest mosasaur. Uh, and mosasaurs actually recently was discovered a freshwater specimen. So they were not only saltwater aquatic animals, but also freshwater aquatic animals. And they had a worldwide distribution, meaning you could find these fossils pretty much anywhere on Earth, given the right conditions. And they were carnivorous. Uh, most marine reptiles were carnivorous. Uh, these animals ate things like shellfish, other marine reptiles, fish, and other aquatic animals. They had a very broad range of diets among all the various species, and they could get quite specialized. Uh, they were fully aquatic, uh, firstly. Uh, these animals would have had pretty much no mobility on land. They would have been quite large, and their limbs would not have been able to support their weight, uh, not even in the clumsy way that sea turtles do. Uh, they had long serpentine bodies, they had very strong jaws, and kind of cool, so very similar to snakes and varanid lizards. They have what we call double-hinged jaws, and they also have very flexible skulls with a lot of different joints that were not fused together. So double-hinged jaws are what allows modern-day snakes to swallow large food items, uh, food oftentimes larger than the animal's own head. Now, while it wasn't as extreme in mosasaurs as it is in snakes, this would have allowed mosasaurs to swallow more food kind of per bite than a lot of their competition, meaning they were very efficient eaters. They also, kind of cool, had these fluked tails, which when these animals were initially discovered, uh, they didn't really think they had those. They thought they swam a lot more like marine iguanas or crocodiles. Um, they thought they were a little bit slower than other marine reptiles, but recently there was a great uh, skin impression of a mosasaur, and specifically the tail, where they were able to find, see this uh, fluke coming off the top of the tail, kind of like if you flipped a shark's tail upside down, uh, where the, the actual tail itself bent down and the fluke protruded off of it. 
Uh, meaning these animals probably had a more efficient way of swimming than we once thought. Uh, they could be quite fast in the water. Uh, the other thing about mosasaurs is they gave birth to live young. And this is going to be a, a pretty common uh, thing with all of these marine reptiles is uh, very quickly a lot of them evolved what we call ovovivipary, uh, internally gestating the eggs and hatching them internally, and then birthing the live young. Uh, this is really crucial for animals that are, like we talked about with the whales and the plesiosaurs, secondarily aquatic. Animals that had a land-living ancestor, but then evolved to be fully aquatic again. Uh, and I've drawn this mosasaur, much like the plesiosaurs, the models I had painted, countershaded. We can zoom in on the mosasaur up there. So this is a roughly meant to be a 45-foot tylosaurus. Tylosaurus is one of the larger species of mosasaur. And you can see it is dark on the top and light on the bottom. And to reiterate countershading again, the big advantage of countershading is something that you see in modern day animals like great white sharks and orcas. Where that dark top half and that light lower half, when there is natural light in the water uh, coming from above, it illuminates that top half, making that color appear lighter to our eyes. And where that lighter bottom half color is not getting light, it's going to look a little bit darker, making the animal more of a uniform color to the eye and helping it blend in. And that's really useful for predators who are going to be ambushing their prey because in the ocean, there's not a lot of stuff to hide behind when you get into open water. So you need every advantage you can to be able to sneak up on stuff. Uh, mosasaurs were also quite well represented in what we call the Inland Sea of North America, of the Cretaceous. Uh, during the Cretaceous, much of central North America was under a shallow sea uh, due to ocean levels being quite high due to very, very warm temperatures worldwide. Uh, the Cretaceous is one of the hottest times in Earth's history, and there were pretty much no permanent uh, ice caps at the poles. While there was seasonal snow in some areas, there was no permanent ice cap. And mosasaurs uh, really did make the best of that inland sea. And they proliferated around, around 80 million years ago, roughly around the same time as a mass extinction, a small extinction happened uh, during the mid-Cretaceous, which really heavily impacted marine life. Uh, the world got quite hot, which changed ocean currents, as well as ocean depths in certain areas. Uh, which led to animals like ichthyosaurs and some plesiosaurs going extinct and leaving those niches open. And the mosasaurs happened to be diversifying just around that time and were able to take advantage of those open opportunities in the ecosystem, uh, leading to this really sudden radiation from very generalist uh, animals to these animals where a lot of them had very specialized teeth. The shellfish-eating uh, mosasaurs had these very round conical teeth, which were perfect for cracking open shells. Some mosasaurs had very nice serrated teeth, which are typically a type of tooth. Those flat serrated ones are great for hunting animals larger than the predator itself. And then others did retain those very generalist teeth, uh, being able to eat many different food sources. Mosasaurs also range, again, as we said, ranged in size, filling all sorts of niches. Uh, so these essentially big aquatic lizards, did quite a lot. Uh, unfortunately, at the end of the Mesozoic, uh, they were hit by that same mass extinction that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs and most of the other marine reptiles. Uh, but yeah, you have any, anyone have any questions about these ones? No? All good? All right, so we're going to get one more zoom in on Rusty here then, I think. And you notice Rusty has been very, very well behaved today on the live stream. He's not been trying to explore that much. But yeah, so everyone, thank you for tuning in. And please enjoy the nice weather we have out. It's almost 50 degrees. It's weird to say that's warm, but it's a good day out. I'd say go for a walk.